So polyolefin exports are extremely important to the short and near-term, long-term forecast for North American resin producers. In the case of polyethylene, there's been investments significantly since shale was found in the late 2000s. So polyethylene has been built much more than what the domestic market is needed. So exports are critical. We've already seen records this year. We'll continue to see records as new plants come on. It's very important that the infrastructure in the United States and Canada, and Mexico, primarily the U.S., through Houston, through the West Coast, through the East Coast, Houston, East Coast, West Coast, in that order. It's critical that resin producers are going to have strong rates. They need exports. In terms of polypropylene, it's much different on scale. I mean, we're talking about 150 million pounds a month versus close to 2.5 billion a month in, term, in terms of polyethylene. But that jump from 50 to 150 a PP will also be very important for resin producers to be able to maintain operating rates. So yeah, if you ask me one of the single most important things in North America, it's the ability to export polyolefins. Yeah, PP is facing some challenges here in, in North America. Uh, unfortunately, on the producer side, there's just too much capacity for the demand and they don't have the ethane advantage that polyethylene has, so they're not the world's second most competitive producer of polypropylene like they are in polyethylene. And therefore, we're seeing a defensive position by the industry trying to maintain whatever margins they can. They have to deal with volatile propylene market that drives their price up and down and drives their customers crazy. So North American PP, because of global oversupply and regional oversupply, looks challenged near to medium term. Yeah, technically on paper, polyethylene on North America is oversupplied, but it's on purpose because you have low cost ethane, second lowest cost position in the world behind the Middle East. And the goal is if exports will allow, and we think they will, you're going to export a significant amount. So 50-50 split roughly for, for Canada, USA. And that allows you to maintain some pricing power in the domestic market. And since the ethane, natural gas, to crude oil nap the spread is expected to be high with relatively high oil pricing that's very advantageous for North American polyethylene producers. So it's a completely different story PE versus PP despite what looks to be like an overhang on paper. For sure, sustainability every single day we read something about advanced recycling bioplastics. There's a lot of goals recently here on electronic vehicles versus internal combustion, gasoline, uh, traditional cars, let's call them. In the terms of PP, we are studying what the effect of EV is. And so far, we really haven't seen a dramatic report decrease or increase. Our compounders, our clients tell us that the EV transition, it's not going to hurt PP demand, but it's not exactly a game changer either. Look, for sure, we're going to have to uh, figure something out sustainability. It's a global regional challenge like we've never seen in our industry. But near to medium term, the majority of demand will still be met by conventional fossil fuel production. We're still seeing significant global investment from those methods. So you're going to continue to hear a lot of announcements, but it's going to take a long time for those announcements and those solutions to really add up to take significant market share away from the demand which is being met today by traditional sources. So we're super excited about the World Chemical Forum here in September. We are trying to put together things that make it extremely unique. We have a very dynamic logistics panel that we're working on for that first day on the 12th. We're going to have the Port of Houston, Port of Charleston, working on some international ports also. It's a huge topic on can we successfully move the exports that are needed to support all this investment in polyolefins. We're going to have our continue to evaluate specific products. We're looking at how to get deeper in analytics give you an example. Today we talk a lot about process per capita consumption in industries, especially in China. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to fully understand and divide that between domestic consumption and exports of semi-finished and 100% finished goods for polymers. And if you think about that, we're going to correlate that to GDP per capita to understand spending power versus consumption from different regions and make global comparisons. We're going to go out further now that our world analysis products go out to 2050 as opposed to just 10 years. 
So we are going to make this as dynamic and as analytical and deep dive as we've ever done. So really hope people can, pencil, not pencil it in, can you know, iron chip it in and definitely be there in Houston in September. So hope to see you then.